Today, um, we are continuing the reading of Saints of Bengal. And uh, today is my turn to read. So uh, we are reading uh, Chapter 8, Prabhu Jagat Bandhu. Uh, that's a new story about Prabhu Jagat Bandhu from Dahapada Mushidabad. And I've been told that this will be a very interesting story because this person was a mystical person, just like most of, actually all of them from these books. Jagadbandu Prabhu was born in the village of Dahapada on the bank of Ganga in district Mur Murshidabad. His father, was Sri Dinanath Nyaya Ratna and mother Srimati Bama Sundari. It appeared from his golden color, uh, supernatural beauty, and extraordinary sweet mood and gestures that he was not an ordinary child, but some heavenly being or manifestation of the divine that had come down on earth to fulfill some purpose of the divine. Therefore, although his name was Jagat Bandhu, people called him Jagat Sundara, beautiful Jagat, Bandhu Sundara, beautiful Bandhu, or Bandhu Sona, golden Bandhu. The astrologer found in his horoscope the constellation of five planets, which indicated that he would be superhuman and his religious influence as a messiah of the fallen souls would extend far and wide. Jagat was only one year old when his mother died. He was seven when his father died. Soon after the death of his mother, he was taken by his uncle, Bhairava Chandra Chakravati, from Dahapada, to his home at Govindapur. His widowed daughter, Digambari Devi, began to look after him with great care and affection. The superhuman character of Jagat came more and more to light as he grew. When he played hide-and-seek with boys, he could be easily caught on account of the supernatural smell of his body. His courage was extraordinary. He would go to the bank of River Padma, uh, board one of the boats lying at anchor and release it from the anchor. The boat would go floating along the stream. One of his playmates would go and tell Digambari Devi. She would come running and crying. Then someone would jump into the river, swim up to the boat, and bring it back to the bank. He would go to the forest with his friends. Someone would say, Jagat, be careful. There is a hole over there. There may be a snake in it. Jagat would place his foot over the hole and stand fearlessly. He would go to the cremation ground with his friends and lie down on one of the artis. That's a bed made of bamboos on which a dead body is carried to the cremation ground. So he would lie down on one of these artis there. His friend would say, Jagat, what are you doing? The arti is impure. But Jagat would not listen. On going back home, the friends would tell Digambari Devi about it. She would say angrily, Jagat, you are impure. You must bathe before entering the house. He would reply, Didi. Purity and impurity are mental concepts. Whatever I touch becomes pure. 
Digambari Devi would forcibly pour a pitcher of water over him. After some time, Bhairava Chandra built a new house in Brahmana Kanda. Brahman, Brahmana Kanda, where he shifted with his entire family. But only seven months after that, he died and the burden of the family fell upon his two sons, Gopala Chandra and Tarini, Chandra, uh, Tarini Charana. And just to check, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. So. Very good. Thank you very much, Mahababa. <laughs> okay, thank you. After some time, Bhairava Chandra, so I'm uh, repeating this last sentence. After some time, Bhairava Chandra built a new house in Brahmana Kanda, where he shifted with his entire family. But only seven months after that, he died, and the burden of the family fell upon his two sons, Gopala Chandra and Tarini Charana. Tarini Charana. They made adequate arrangement for Jagat's edu education. At the age of 13, the sacred thread ceremony of Jagat was performed. This marked the beginning of a new change in his life. Jagat, who, was, who had so far been restive and sportive, suddenly became serious and grave. In thought, word, and deed, and in the observance of the rules and regulations of the Shastras, he began to look like a young Rishi. He bathed three times during the day, performed sand, Sandhya Puja, uh, that's a religious service performed daily in the morning and evening. Both morning and evening, cooked his own food, observed Brahmacharya, with strictness, always kept his body covered with white cloth, kept his eyes towards the ground when, while walking, talked very little, sat on the last bench in the school, and was often lost in deep thought. Sometimes he went out of home and sat in deep meditation, in a lonely place for hours. At night, Digambari Devi made Jagat sleep by her side. From time to time, she touched him to make sure that he was there. If she did not find him, she cried, Jagat, Jagat. His brothers and servants got up and went out in search of him. Someone shouted, Oh, I feel the smell of Jagat's body coming from the other side of the pond. When they went there, they saw him sitting in deep meditation. No one had the courage at that time to disturb him. Jagat was always seen in a thoughtful and pensive mood. It appeared that the spark was smoldering in his heart, and he was restless to do something great. After Jagat had finished his education in Brahmana Kanda, he was sent to Ranchi, where his brother Tarini Charana was an income tax inspector. He admitted, he admitted him into a school there. Tarini Charana's neighbor and his friend Rai Bahadura Rakala Babu had a valuable horse who had gone mad. He used to throw away anyone who tried to ride him and run. Once Jagat heard Rai Bahadura 
talking with Tarini Charana about the horse. He spoke out, I shall tame the horse. Tarini was alarmed. He said, Jagat, you must not dare to do that. The horse is ferocious. Uh, he, ha he has curbed the pride of many horsemen. You must not even go near him. Jagat laughed and said, Dada, even a lion turns into a mouse when he comes under my control. Tarini laughed it away as a joke. One evening, when Rai Bahadura returned from his office, he was surprised not to see the horse in the stable. When Tarini Charana returned from his office, he was surprised not to see Jagat at home. Someone said he had seen Jagat riding the horse. Someone said he had seen Jagat ride uh, as soon as they had, uh, sorry, someone had said that he had seen Jagat riding the horse. As soon as they heard this, there was no end to their anxiety. Rai Bahadura said, Tarini Babu, I'm not worried about the horse. He may or may not come back. He may live or die, but I am deeply concerned about your brother. But both were lost in anxiety and looking expectantly toward the road. Um, when they had a distant vision of the horse running towards them in great speed and raising dust all around, Tarini Babu's heart sank. He thought the horse was returning after throwing away Jagat and crushing him into pieces. But the very next moment, the horse came running in lightning speed with the rider on his back and stood at the door. Jagat held the bride, bridle. Jagat held the bridle of the horse in one hand and whip in the other. His face was red and wet with perspiration. He got down from the horse and stood before Rai Bahadura with pride and said, Rai Bahadura, your horse is tamed. This provided an instance of Jagat's wonderful power of attraction and enchantment, which worked on men and animals alike, and which in later years turned atheists into theists and sinners into saints. One day, when Tarini Babu returned from the office, he saw Jagat uh, breathing right like in pain with acute stomach ache. He called the doctor. The doctor diagnosed that the patient was given poison. He treated accordingly and he was cured. There was no one in the house except the cook and the servant. The cook had already fled. When the servant was threatened, he confessed that he and the cook had conspired to give poison to Jagat because they used to steal and found Jagat's presence in the house a hindrance to stealing. Tarini Babu wanted to hand over the servant to the police. But Jagat said, Dada, the remedy for wickedness is not punishment, but mm, pen, penitence, like compassion. So the, the remedy for wickedness is not punishment, but compassion. Excuse him. He will feel uh, penitent. Tarini Babu has excused the servant, but he did not think it proper to keep Jagat with him. He sent him to Babana to live with Golokamani, the younger sister of Digambari Devi. Regret. Yeah, penitence means regret. So, 
Uh, it's just an explanation of this word. So, uh, Tarini Babu sent Jagat to Pavana to live with Goloka Mani, the younger sister of Digambari Devi, whose husband, Pasanna Kumar Lahidi, was a big lawyer. He thought that there will be there would be better that uh, he thought that there he would be better looked after. Lahidi Babu admitted him into a school in Pavana. Jagat's career as a great saint and savior and redeemer of mankind started from Pabana. The spark that had been smoldering in his heart now turned into flame. He was never very much interested in education, although he always passed the examination satisfactorily. But now education was but nominal because he had already attained the highest stage of bhakti, which was the end of education. He now used to be always lost, always lost in the world of Bhava and Lila. He was fond of Kirtan since birth, but Kirtan had now become the heart and soul of his life. As soon as the sound wave of Kirtan struck his ear, even from a distance, he started dancing and became unconscious. His body trembled, tears streamed out of his eyes, drops of blood covered every pore of his body, and sometimes breathing also stopped. Once he was witnessing a dramatic performance relating to Dhruva, as soon as Dhruva started singing Kotaya Padma Palashalochana Hari, Oh, where is the lotus eyed Hari? He started trembling and became unconscious. At that time, Chandrasekhar Akali, the famous doctor of Calcutta, was there. He said that it was an epileptic fit. But when he examined him closely, he found that his pulse beat had stopped. His touch produced sattvika bhavas in him, and he began to feel like dancing and singing Haribo, Haribo. Once, while Jagadbandhu was bathing in the river, Ichamati, he heard a coward singing, Arakabe dekahabo jugalarupa ekasane. Oh, when shall I see the divine couple, Radha and Krishna, sitting together? Immediately he became unconscious and fell into the river. The people present there brought him out and laid him on the bank. For a long time, consciousness did not, did not return. A Vaishnava Babaji said, He is in Bhava Murcha senselessness due to bhava. Come, let us sing Harinam around him. All began to sing Haribo, Haribo, with the clapping of hands. Jagadbandhu opened his eyes, but the bhava persisted for a long time. Jagadbandhu was mad on account of his extraordinary devotion to Harinam. He found another mad friend in Harana. Harana was his name, but he was called Kshepa Harana. Uh, Kshepa means mad, so he was called Mad Harana. People were surprised by their friendship because outwardly, outwardly they were opposed to each other in character, form, mode of living and manners, and in almost every other thing that was external. Jagat was extraordinarily beautiful. Harana was ugly. Jagat was the very figure of cleanliness. Harana of dirtiness. Jagat bathed 
thrice during the day, wore clothes that were washed by his own hands and were spotlessly clean. He never even touched the bed of clothes or clothes used by others. Harana wore clothes full of patches of old and dirty pieces of cloth collected from various places. It appeared from his dirty body that he had never in his life even touched water. He lived in the veranda of a dilapidated building in a lonely place in Pabana. From the crevices in the walls of the veranda hissed many snake, many a snake, even during the day. All around him one could see lying old and broken earthen pots full of stale and rotten eatables thrown away by people and collected by him from various places. Jagat was still in budding youth, while it was difficult to say anything about the age of Harana. It wasn't known how old he was. He had seen the marriages of the grandfathers and grandmothers of many old people of Pabana. People called him Trikalagya. No? No. Uh, Trikala... Yes, Trikalagya. One who knows the past, present, and the future. And Vakshisida. Vaksida. Sorry, Vaksida. Uh, one whose words always come true. Whatever he said about any person, even casually, always came true. But he was very rough in behavior and his language was abusive. Therefore, people generally did not go to him. But, as they say, only a jeweler knows the worth of a jewel. Jagat Bandhu had the highest regard and love for him and called him reverentially Shiva. He called Jagat Bandhu... Uh, so... Harana, actually, called Jagat Bandhu affectionately Jaga. Spotlessly clean and fresh like a flower that had just bloomed, Jagat would often go and clasp, clasp him, embrace him, in spite of his dirty and awful bad smelling body, as if he was eternally his own and he loved him more than his own self. Locking him firmly in his arms, he would say lovingly, Oh, Shiva. Shiva said, Oh, Jaga. They would both go on repeating this till they were lost in Prema Samadhi. Even in the absence of Jagat Bandhu, Shiva often cried, Jaga, Jaga, like one who was intoxicated. Obviously, he derived from it the same pleasure as he derived in clasping, in embracing Jaga. Harana often went to the house of Sri Prasanna Kumar, Lahidi, and Gola Kamani daily. Fed him, uh -huh. sorry, uh, Harana often went to the house of Sri Prasanna Kumar. And Lahiri and Goloka Mani Devi fed him affectionately. Once he looked at her in a mysterious manner and said, Look, Didi, Jagat is not human. Jaga is Raja, king. We are all his prajal subjects. It is said that Jagat Bandhu once told one of his confidants, Shiva is truly Shiva. And the Advaita Charya of Gora Lila, who has been living here in disguise since the disappearance of Gora Lila. Ever since Jagat Bandhu went to Pabana, the youth of Pabana began to be drawn to him. That means young people of this place, Pabana, began to be attracted by him. They were attracted by his beauty 
the supernatural radiance and smell of his body, his piety, his love, his spirituality, his high spirits, and strictly disciplined life. They were anxious to surrender themselves at his feet so that he might guide and mold them and make them like himself. Jagat Bandhu was only waiting for this opportunity. He became their preceptor, uh, he, their teacher. His precepts, his teachings to them were, and now it goes uh, like a list. One, practice brahmacharya and make others do the same. Two, whatever you do, do for Govinda, knowing that the doer is he, not you. Three, while practicing Dharma, if any calamity of this or disaster comes, face it bravely and patiently, because Dharma is Krishna. Four, do not talk ill of others. Five, do not waste your time in useless activities and talks. Six, you may or may not do anything else, but you must do Harinam. Harinam is my life. Keep me alive through Harinam. Seven, others may or may not do Harinam, but you should go about chanting Harinam loudly so that they may hear. Only by hearing Harinam, people can attain deliverance from Maya. Precepts, teachings are fruitful only when the preceptor, the teacher himself, is a living embodiment of the teachings. The powerful teachings of Jagat Bandhu, who, who was himself a living example of all that he preached, soon brought about unprecedented change in the young man of Pabana. Their guardians apprehended that the boys might renounce the world and they might be deprived of their only hope and support in old age. They conferred together and decided to cut at the very root of the problem by killing Jagat Bandhu. Just imagine, people. The boys came to know about this. They informed Jagat Bandhu. He remained grave, undisturbed and unmoved like the Himalayas, but said many atrocities will be committed upon this body, but no one will be able to kill it. Suffer violence, but do not be violent. You may also have to face violence. Move, move about fearlessly. Jagat Bandhu used to go out for a walk before sunrise every morning. At that time of day, some villains came from behind and started hitting him mercilessly. They went on hitting till he fell unconscious on the ground. They thought he was dead and ran away, leaving him alone in the forest. He was seen by a watchman returning home after night duty. He went and informed Lahidi Babu. He and his men ran towards the forest. They lifted Jagat Bandhu and brought him home. The news soon spread in Pabana like wildfire. Crowds of young men started coming to Lahidi Babu's house. They were all wild with anger. As soon as Jagat Bandhu regained consciousness, they asked him about the names of the villains. He remained silent. When asked repeatedly, he asked for paper and pencil. While he was writing, everyone was anxious looking at the paper for the names. But instead of the names, what he wrote on it in bold letters was, 
I have not come to chastise, but to deliver. After this episode, Tarini Babu came and took Jagat Bandhu with him to Ranchi. He admitted him into an English school at Ranchi in class 10. But at his time, when he thought of redeeming the jivas, but at this time, when he thought of redeeming the jivas, re uh, like delivering, freeing the jivas by preaching Harinam to them, was persistently gnawing, uh, disturbing, like uh, pressuring him. How could he apply his mind to studies and to what end? Impelled by the thought, he one day sneaked out of Ranchi. No one knows where he went and what he did for two days. Not days, sorry, two years. No one knows where he went and what he did for two years. After two years, be reached, uh, he reached Brahmana Kanda and started his life's mission, the preaching of Harinam in right earnest. He built, he built two ashramas, one in Brahmana Kanda and the other in Vakchara, near Brahmana Kanda. He organized seven kirtan parties. In each party, there were two mridangas and four pairs of karatals. All the seven parties went about doing kirtan in different parts of the city every day. Jagat Bandhu also accompanied, accompanied the kirtan parties. Sometimes all the parties together performed kirtan continuously for 24 hours. The songs sung in kirtan were composed by Jagat Bandhu himself. An important part of Kirtan used to be Hare Luta. Uh, this means scattering of sweets in honor of Hari in order that people may pick them up and eat. So it was distributing prasad. This also Jagat Bandhu did himself. At first, he scattered prasad in Hariluta. Then in a, a fit of joyful emotions, he squandered pen, pencil, stick, clothes, coins, notes, and whatever he could lay his hand on. Once he threw away a sitar in Hariluta, saying, Hari bo, sitar broke. He gave the owner of the sitar a pair of karatals and made him understand that the proper instruments for kirtan were mridanga and karatal. He said that mridanga was Advaitacharya himself and karatal Nityananda. So, interesting information. So... He said that Vridanga was Advaitacharya himself and Karatal Nityananda. Once Jagat Bandhu was out for Nagara Kirtan, that's a, a circumambulation of the town while performing Kirtan, like a walking Kirtan in the town. From the op opposite side was coming Banamali Rai the highly devoted Raja of Tadasa on the back of an elephant, surrounded by pikemen and gunmen, by his guards. He saw in the midst of the Kirtan party an extraordinarily beautiful golden youth of, of about 20, dancing and singing and shedding tears profusely as he sang. He wondered who could be that golden youth, so divine in looks, so mad with love. He got down from the elephant, 
On inquiry, he found that he was the same Jagat Bandhu about whom he had heard so much already from different persons. Then he went uh, penetrating through the crowd near him and bending on his knees said to him, Prabhu, I request you to grace my home once with the holy dust of your feet. The next day came Ragunandana Goswami, the son of the Raja Guru of Banamali Roy, and took him on an elephant to the house of Banamali Roy. As soon as he reached the Banamali Roy, the, uh, uh, sorry, as soon as he reached there, Banamali Roy fell prostrate at his feet. He took him to a room adjacent to the temple of his Thakur Radha Vinod and closed the door. He tried to say something, but he said, Prabhu, and his throat was choked and tears streamed out of his eyes. He could not say more, but he had said by his bhava more than he could say by words. He had said that Jagat Bandhu was his Prabhu and he was his servant. Jagat Bandhu replied by saying, Rajarshi, implying thereby that thought that though a Raja, he was like a Rishi. Since then, Jagat Bandhu began to be called Prabhu Jagat Bandhu and Banamali began to be called Rajarshi Banamali Roy. Since then, Banamali Roy began to take Jagat Bandhu's advice as his command. As advised by him, he took upon himself the responsibility of printing and distributing the works of Rupa, Sanatana, Jiva, and other Goswamis. Even today, we find in the libraries the numerous works of the Goswamis published by him. Before coming into contact with Jagat Bandhu, Prabhu Banamali Rai Roy uh, was very much under the influence of Brahma Samaj. He regarded Brahma as formless and had no faith in the Sri Vigraha of Bhagavan. The service of Thakur Radha Vinod in his house was done by the Pujari as a matter of routine in the same manner in which it was done by his father when he was alive. Part of the service was the service of hookah. So again comes the hookah. It's the smoking pipe with long flexible tube. Um, so part of the service was the service of hookah. Radha Vinod had acquired the habit of smoking hookah since the time he was worshipped by a devotee who used to smoke hookah. <laughs> Here we go again. The devotee offered hookah to Radha Vinod before smoking. I think we read this story about this other devotee. I forgot the name. And I think it's the same Radha Vinod now, but from the different angle, different point of view in a different story. So this devotee offered hookah to Radha Vinod before smoking. One day, after boga was offered to Radha Vinod, Jagat Bandhu said to Banamali Roy, <laughs> uh, Come, let us enjoy the hookah-smoking lila of Radha Vinod. He went with Banamali Roy and sat down in the veranda of the temple. After some time, he said, Now, here, Radha Vinoda is smoking. The Guda Guda sound of hookah can be heard clearly. By his mercy, the spiritual ears of Banamali Roy opened, and he was surprised to hear the sound. Tears of love and penitence. Uh, 
regret, yeah, tears of love and reg regret for not believing in the Sri Vigraha began to flow from his eyes. He was drowned in Bhava Samadhi. Since then, Banamali Rai's faith in Sri Vigraha became so strong that even if someone said something which even remotely implied that the Sri Vigraha was only a statue, he felt extremely pained at heart. Banamali Roy regarded Radha Vinod and Jagat Bandhu Prabhu as non-different and served them accordingly. Jagat Bandhu started his mission of preaching Kirtan with the Buno community of Faridapur, which was the lowliest and the most downtrodden community of the Hindu society. Since long, these people had been neglected and ill-treated by the Hindus. The English missionaries wanted to convert them into Christianity. They fixed a day for their conversion. The same day, Jagat Bandhu organized a grand and pompous Sankirtan procession. The procession marched on rending marched on, rending the sky with high-pitched sound of numerous mridangas and karatals and reached the colony where the Bunos lived. The Bunos joined the Sankirtan. Jagat Bandhu embraced their leader, Rajani Pasha, and sang and danced with him. Other members of the party embraced the other Bunos and danced with them. Sankirtan changed the heart of the Bunos. They gave up the idea of proselytization into Christianity. The missionaries had to return disappointed. Jagat Bandhu gave them Mridanga and Karatal. They organized a big Sankirtan party. Jagat Bandhu included it in his own party and treated them both equally. Rama Bhagana in Calcutta was, was densely populated by Domas. Those are the lowest case caste in India. Uh, Jagat Bandhu often went there and stayed with the, his devotee Tinkadi. He taught them how to perform kirtan. Within a short time, Rama Bhagana became the center of kirtan in Calcutta. All the domas became devotees. They worshipped Jagat Bandhu as their Bhagavan. Jagat Bandhu also gave every respect to them. He did not even hesitate to eat from their hand. Gradually, Jagat Bandhu attracted several other persons who became his chief assistants in the work of preaching Harinam. Ramdas Babaji was his closest companion since his boyhood. He used to be the principal singer in his kirtans. He had a sweet voice and his bhava was deep. As soon as he started kirtan, all the sattvika bhavas appeared on his body. His name was Radhika, but Jagat Bandhu lost outward consciousness as soon as he said Radhika. Therefore, he called him Sarika. Later, it was he who gave him the name Ramdas. <clears throat> Atula Champati was the husband of Digambari Devi's daughter, daughter Shiroda Sundari. He was the headmaster of a high school in Ara, in district Patana. He met Jagat Bandhu first <clears throat> at the time of his marriage and came under his influence. 
he began in his own mind uh, to regard him as his guru. Later, he renounced the world and became a uh, recluse. It's like a monk. He used to go about chanting, Haribo, Haribo, with a bag hanging from his shoulder and ringing karatals with his hands, or symbols with his hands in the streets and by lanes of Calcutta. Therefore, he began to be called Haribol Champati. He visited the place where the Domas lived in Ramabhagana more frequently. Sri Devendranath Chakravarti was also the headmaster of a high school. He also came under the influence of Jagat Bandhu and became his ardent devotee. Like Champati, uh, he also renounced the world and started going around different places chanting, Jainitai, Jainitai. Therefore, he began to be called Jainitai. Similarly, a number of other devotees came under the influence of Jagat Bandhu and were charged by him with Shakti to go around and preach Harinam. Prominent among them were Mahendraji, the founder of Mahanam Sampradaya, Ramesh Chandra Chakravarti, Bakulala Vishwasa, Mahimadas, and Navina Chandra Prajavasi. Jagat Bandhu passed his last days in Goyala Chamata, uh, in Goyala Chamata Pali, near Faridapur. An ashram was built there, which was called Sri Sridam Faridapur Sri Angana. While living in Sri Angana, signs of Bhavan Mada, madness in love or divine madness, began to appear in him. In the state of Bhavan Mada, he used to be so lost in Bhava that he had no consciousness of body. He did not know whether he had clothes on his body or not. Usually he used to be naked. In his bhava, he used to be like an infant, like a child, baby, who depended entirely upon others. From 1902 to 1918, for about 16 years and eight months, he remained silent. During this period, he lived in a dark room of Sri Sri Angana, with the door closed from inside. He did not allow a lamp to be lit in the room. He had no connection whatsoever with the outside world. He ate and slept very little. He left his body in 1921 two and a half years after he broke silence. Who was Jagat Bandhu and what was the secret of his Mahamauna Lila, his long period of silence? It is difficult to say. He himself said, I am a sweeper. I have come to sweep the hearts of people. I am Harinamas and no one else's. You possess me and unite with me by doing Harinam. His devotees hold that he was the combined incarnation of Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu in the form of, um, sorry, his devotees hold that he was the com combined incarnation of Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. In the form of Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Sri Krishna fulfilled his want of a superior rasa, the rasa resulting from the experience of his own beauty and sweetness, which Radha alone enjoyed fully through the eyes of Prema. He could do so in his Gambira Lila as Gora, because Gora was the combined incarnation of Krishna and Radha. Similarly, in the form I don't understand. Similarly, in the form of Jagat Bandhu, Gora fulfilled his want of a superior rasa. 
the rasa resulting from the experience of his own beauty and sweetness, which was fully enjoyed by Nityananda. Well, he could do so in his Gambira Lila in Goya Chala, Goya, Goyala Chama, Chamata as Jagat Bandhu, because Jagat Bandhu was the combined incarnation of Gauranga and Nityananda. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, Mahaprabhu is depicted as saying that he would have two more incarnations. Henumate Aroache Dui Avatar, Kirtana Anand Rupe Haibe The followers of Jagat Bandhu think that he was one of the two incarnations mentioned in Chaitanya Bhagavat because the luster of his body was like that of Sri Gauranga. Because, like him, he launched the expedition of delivering the jivas from bondage through Sankirtan. Because he was also humbler than the blade of grass, like him. And because, like him, he was also in his lifetime regarded as Bhagavan and people called him Nava Gauranga. It is because people believed that he was Gauranga Jagat Bandhu had sometimes to adopt strange devices to conceal himself from them. Once he had gone to Navadvip to bathe in the Ganga on some auspicious day, when Navadvip was crowded with pilgrims, news spread like wildfire that Navagoranga had come to Navadvip and they would be blessed with his darshan when he went to bathe in the Ganga. Huge crowds gathered on his path to the river. Jagat Bandhu came to know about this and left Navadvip at night. On another occasion, when he was going to Faridapur, thousands of people who believed that he was Bhagavan gathered in a market through which he had to pass for his darshan. He asked his men to prepare an arati. He lay down on the arti, not arati, the arti, this, uh, as we read before, this, this stretcher for dead people. So he asked his men to prepare a deathbed, actually. He lay down on this arti and covered himself with a cloth. His men carried him through the market chanting Haribol as if they were carrying a corpse. So actually, he ran away from them. Wow, this was such an amazing story. I don't know how about you, but for me, while I was reading, all these things that I was reading, I, I could compare to those from Goralila. It was very similar. I don't know. So it stays to be seen. We don't know if he was... Goranga Mahaprabhu, but this story says that it's quite likely that he was. We don't know, but who knows? It's a very mysterious uh, story. <laughs>